<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, powerhouse kings and queens, I'm Zoopy Goggins, I'm a frag freak and... Hold on, that's not right. Oi! No! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, contrary to what you've heard, I'm Super Goggins, I'm a frag freak, and Mr. Smelly's a nerd. No, he's not. Mr. Smelly's not a nerd. He's a very nice man. And if anyone's going to call Mr. Smelly a nerd, it's Mr. Smelly. So today, I have been very kindly asked along by Dan to shamelessly plug and promote to review his debut fragrance, Gravitas Pour Om by Norton and Wilson. Hello guys, just in case you're wondering what's going on, I've interrupted the video very briefly. Uh, just to let you know, Zoopy Goggins has hijacked the channel today, so I've let him send in this video very kindly. It's a review of Gravitas Boron, which he did buy at full price from us. And I really want to urge you all to go and check out Zoopy's channel and hopefully subscribe to it because he's got a great review channel there and he deserves a lot more subscribers. The link is in the description. And of course, there's also a link if you want to go and uh, check out the Norton and Wilson website where you can find out more about and order Gravitas Pour Om. Now back to Zoopy's review and uh, let's see what he's got to say. Now, I'm not entirely sure why Mr. Smelly has chosen to call it uh, gravitas pour om rather than for men but then who knows maybe mr smelly has some heritage that we don't know about but still it sounds posher doesn't it and uh it suits it anyway just having a little dig it's all right done i'll go through a little um explanation of the presentation let's close it because I've, I've just started opening that there the um the box is very nice it's a lovely green color which i think reflects the fragrance and this gold on here is very nice. It's embossed, as in the as, as is the writing on the side. It's embossed on there. The cardboard is a little thin, but that's no big issue. There is a cardboard insert inside that holds the fragrance in, fragrance in nice and snugly. Then the bottle itself is very nice as well. It's reasonable to good quality. The bottle itself, thick glass, no imperfections. The lid is metal and quite heavy, fits on nice and snug, although I wouldn't want to lift it up by the lid. Um, the brass coloured metal plaque on here is very nice as well. It does look slightly clumsily glued on there if you examine it very closely, but that's sort of criticised. It's, it's very, very close scrutinisation to, uh, to spot that. And overall, the effect is very charming and sophisticated looking. It's a great and lovely looking bottle. Before I continue with this, I'd like to make very clear that I have not been given this fragrance for free. Not only have I not been given this fragrance for free, <clears throat> scruffy stinge bag, um, I actually bought it myself and two bottles of it as well for the same price that anybody else would pay for it. And it was a blind buy. But I am happy to report that I'm very pleased with my purchase and it's a lovely, lovely smell which we'll go into now. Before I do go into the smell, actually, one thing. The uh, the technicalities, um, let's get it straight. I'll put that back on there. Uh, Norton & Wilson is the company. It's uh, Dan's brainchild, and the perfumer behind it is a guy called John Stephen, um, a very uh, accomplished and esteemed perfumer who is um, closely linked to the company possibly even the owner, I'm not entirely sure, um, fragrance company Bodica or Bodicea the Victorious. Uh, Dan's uh, partner in this is uh, the Norton and Wilson aspect of it is a guy called Matt Wilson from Pocket Sense, and that's the company. Right, now we will go into the smell. In my day. Backtrack, backtrack. The, I, can, I can do that as well. I'll, I'll, I'll do this as well, right? So we'll do it at the same time. I can multitask, all right? So I'll spray someone here. Oh yeah. The notes then. In the top, we have bergamot, we have mandarin orange, and we have lavender. 
In the mid, we have coriander, we have cardamom, and we have pepper. In the base, there is patchouli, oak kamos, ambergris, and vanilla. Now, as I just sprayed that just then, it brought back this, um, it does have similarities to other fragrances, but what fragrances don't? I mean, all fragrances have similarities to other fragrances, right? Now, this is a standalone and unique fragrance in its own right, but it does have some aspects of other things. I've never smelt um, Invasion Barbare, Barbare um, which is meant to, this is meant to have characteristics, shared characteristics with, according to some reviewers, or possibly even Dan himself as well. And it does have... Um, I've never smelt Bois de Portugal either, which is the same. That is meant to have some aspects of Bois de Portugal by Creed. Uh, but what I do pick up a lot of in this that I have smelt is Hubigon Fugere Royale, the Eau de Parfum version, which I did have a decant of, and it reminds me quite a lot of that. In in that aspect of it, I find it to be almost like... Um, there's a there's an aspect of Guerlain fragrances that people describe, which is a Guerlinade, which is... Basically, in this one, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting sort of a bright, fizzy, effervescent sort of almost floral thing in this. And it's not heavy in florals, this, but I'm getting florals in the background. I don't know what florals there are, but I'd be very surprised if there are not some, not some florals in this. Um, so that girly night is kind of bright, effervescent, sparkly, sweet, powdery kind of thing. So the smell itself, okay, it's very, very well blended. From those ingredients and notes I gave you, I can't pick anything out like the way you would do in certain other fragrances. It's just blended. It's uh, I can't dig into it and go, oh yes, I smell this and this. It's just extremely well blended. It's like trying to pick out the taste of potato in, in vegetable soup. It's just a mix, right? You what, geezer? So th this has been described as, as almost like a quite old fashioned kind of fragrance. And I think that it has a quite a modern aspect to it myself because of the sweetness. Now it did surprise me a little bit, the amount of sweetness that is in this because it is quite vanilla heavy. The vanilla seems to drag everything through. So I do get aspects of this kind of green oak mossy thing. I do get aspects of the patchouli and, uh, and all of the other things in there. But what really drags it through for me, the spices and everything, is the vanilla. It seems the vanilla is carrying everything to me, um, which brings with it a great sweetness. And I know that these um, 70s and 80s fragrances that Dan really likes, these old fashioned macho masculine <laughs> um, sort of barbershop fragrances, back in the 70s and 80s, now I got into fragrances originally in the early 90s, and that was coming in the tail end of, of those, those older fragrances, Back then, almost nothing in men's fragrances had that kind of sweetness, almost nothing. Um, but this, it, it seems to bring a modern feel with it, with that sweetness. It, it A lot of the modern fragrances that we have now, the, you know, the, 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 we, we won't go into names, we know what we're talking about. The, the, a lot of them are carried by sweetness, and I find that has an aspect of this. So it's kind of like it's got this old-fashioned barbershop kind of thing with it, but it's brought the whole thing kicking, dragging and kick, dragged it kicking and screaming to the modern era. So it kind of fits in with this sort of old fashioned vibe as well. Now, longevity and projection, it's a bit of a difficult one for me to, to pin down because when I first tried it out, I thought, right, well, it smells lovely and it lasts a long time, but the projection is not massive. Then I tried it again. As you can see, I have used quite a bit of it. <clears throat> it's a good 15 mil gone, I reckon, from that. And I've had it since March, so I've had time to get used to it. Then I tried it again, and it seemed like it was quite strong. And then I just wasn't sure, but a couple of things happened. Right? First of all, I wore it one day, and it got to the end of the day. It'd been on there for about eight hours, something like that. Maybe six, eight hours, that kind of thing. And I went to my missus. I said to her, she didn't know what I had on. I said is that still strong? And I held my arm out. And she just said, yes, it is. Right. And I also wore it to work one day and I went into the back office. The manager was in there and she said, oh, what's that you have on? That's really nice. And she was in the back of the room. I didn't walk past her. I walked in and she said that, right? So I'd obviously pushed a load of it in with me. So it's a case of, <coughs> is there a little element of the wearer is partly 
nose blinded to it? Does it cause a little bit of olfactory fatigue? Is it stronger to other people than it is to the wearer? It must be something like that. I mean, it can, it's variable on me. But I would put the performance in general on the good side of medium in terms of sillage and projection. The longevity I find to be good, definitely good. It lasts a long time on me. But then I love fragrances that shout, right? I mean, I love really, really loud fragrances. But this one I don't think needs to shout, okay? It has enough of an aura and a vibe with it that you definitely can smell it around you. And it feels like it's too gentlemanly to shout. It's too gentlemanly to shout. It doesn't need to shout. In fact, I think this is the kind of fragrance, right? Were it a person, it could be walking past a pub that had erupted into full-scale battle, right? Did you spill my Bodies wine? flying out of windows and glasses coming out the window, right? And it would just walk in there and say something like, Dearest patronage, Allow me to bring it to your attention that this outrageous behaviour is unacceptable, uncalled for, and uncouth. Now I insist that you desist forthwith. And the people in the pub would just go, You know what? Good point. And they'd just pat each other's hair out and pick up their teeth and go back and buy another pint. So that's the feel I get from this one. It's sophisticated, suave, charming, and calming. Charming and calming. There's a good one for you. It does have an element of sort of old-fashioned, this old-fashioned feel to it. No matter, you know, I say that it has, it, it brings a modern vibe with it. I mean, that's that's something I can just say about it. It's it's old. It has an old-fashioned feel with a modern vibe uh, does that make any sense an old-fashioned feel with a modern vibe maybe an old-fashioned aura with a modern twist something like that you know what i mean okay i think it's really really nice i'm very very pleased i've got it um i would like to thank dan for the opportunity to let me come and talk about it on his channel so uh that's uh, that's all very nice thanks dan and thanks to everyone for watching. Um, I have my own YouTube channel. I'll leave it there. So thank you very much indeed again. Uh, I'll leave you to go about your business now. If Dan wants to have a word after this, that's up to him. I'm not going to do any of the begging and stuff because I'm on. I'd, I'd effectively be asking you to, to subscribe to Dan, wouldn't I? You know, um, okay, subscribe. No, no, do, do whatever you want to do. And. Um, so I'll do my outro, which goes, safe man, chill out, enough respect, and I will catch you next time. Sweet. I hope to catch you next time. Anyway, all the best, people. Lovely. Yeah, Dan? Hi, mate. How was that then? All right? Checks in the post. Sorted.